The sun's out, we're in Preston, we're at the Morrisons Superstore electric vehicle charging hub. This is it. <laughs> One charger. Oh, this poor lonely little charger, all out on its own. It's a really old ABB unit. It's 75 kilowatts. To give them a little bit of credit though, it is a triple, even though there are only two charging bays. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. Oh, hang on, I just had a branch in me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I do apologize if we get attacked by a branch here. It's a little bit breezy. Anyway, uh, what we have here, three charging connectors, plugs. One is Chadamo. This is for the likes of Renault, Zoe's and Nissan Leafs. We've got CCS, which is the vast majority of all the EVs on the road today. And we also have AC charging, which is every single vehicle on the road today, which is an electric vehicle vehicle because they are common and that's the same fitting as if you have a home charger or any other fast charger. Now Morrisons have decided to make the pricing so simple. Doesn't matter what you choose, 83 pence a kilowatt hour and I think that might be the reason why every time we come here there's never anyone using it. You can go AC charging, 43 pence anywhere else. Just come from Tesco, 49p. Here, 83p. Interestingly enough though, for you Renault Zoe drivers, these are 43 kilowatt AC chargers. These are quite rare. Most of them cap out at 11 or 22 kilowatts. These are 43s. So these for a Renault Zoe will give it a really fast charge. Unfortunately, can't do anything about the price, still 83 pence. Uh, CCS for most of them, 83 pence. Within a mile of here, you've got so much choice that is much, much cheaper than that. No wonder nobody's using this. And Chadamo, uh, Chadamo here is 50 kilowatts, uh, 83 pence. God. It's really sad. And I was hoping to come here and find something had changed. In fact, no. I thought I just saw something which might have been a charger, but no, I was mistaken. Um, this really is a half-hearted effort. This has been here for probably the best part of a decade. Uh, nobody uses it. I'm surprised it's still working. The screen's working anyhow. Um, I'm not even gonna plug in to try it, which is something I do on many occasions. 83 pence. It's either gonna work or it's not, but nobody's using it, so does anybody care? Uh, Morrison's really need to get their act together. If it's worth fitting, it's worth having a number of them. If it's not worth fitting, take it out, just abandon it. Um, it's really strange because there's so many people seeing EV charging now as the future with the likes of, um, of uh, Sainsbury's with their charging system and the likes of uh, Asda, uh, which is now owned, a lot of them are owned now by EV Point and they're expanding with EV on the move, installing chargers. So there's a lot going on, but these just sitting around doing nothing. They're like you find on the motorways and nobody uses them much anymore. They're too dear, too slow. Yeah, not much going on. So location's fine. You've got a uh, Morrison Superstore. Uh, just up the road, you've got a McDonald's, if that's what you fancy. We've got the docks here uh, with some yachts moored up there. So quite a nice location. And there's all sorts going in round here. There's been a lot of development recently. Uh, it's a good location. Why aren't they doing something with it? It really is a total mess when it comes to supermarkets and EV charging. Uh, we recently filmed at Sainsbury's in Preston and they've got a load of uh, Ken Power chargers going in and they've got, they're heavily advertising their charge service. Uh, it is unfortunately 75p, but you do get nectar points with it, which is something. Um, some of the other supermarkets, uh, they are taking a, a real serious effort with EV charging and starting to look into it. Others have just bailed out and they just ring up somebody like Shell Recharge and say, shove a couple of chargers in my car park just so we can tick a box for green or whatever it, it is they tick for. So the likes of Aldi, the likes of um, uh, Lidl's, uh, where we've had yeah, where we've had some quite interesting meetings where because nobody uses them, people park here with petrol cars. And I'm not afraid of walking up to people saying, you can't charge your petrol car here. Um, 
but not been punched yet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but a lot of them, they really do just bail out of it altogether and just ring someone up, pod point for Tesco, uh, shall recharge for Lidl and Aldi, and they just say, shove a couple of charges in the car park and uh, we'll split the money or whatever the deal is. Needs to be a lot more than that. Uh, the supermarkets, when it came to petrol, took over in a big way. At one point, I'm, I'm old, so I remember this, at one point we didn't have supermarkets, but at one point we didn't have uh, petrol stations in supermarkets. So if you wanted to buy petrol or diesel, you had to go to a garage, a Shell, a BP, an SO, um, one of those. And that's where you got your petrol from. And they had a, a, an absolute monopoly at one point, and so prices went up. The supermarkets though, once they started getting a lot of people coming along in cars, they found that, oh, we could have another revenue stream if we start selling petrol. And so most of them now, they buy the petrol on the open market. It's not direct from Shell or SO, anyone like that. There's a big market, uh, I think it's in the Netherlands, Amsterdam or somewhere, where you can just buy petrol wholesale. And they will buy it um, wholesale and then they will distribute it around. But very quickly, they saw this as a revenue stream and they, they took over the petrol market uh, from the, uh, the tied uh, garages. So today, the supermarkets sell more petrol than the independent garages, the Shells and the BPs and the SOs. Um, but they haven't quite seen the same opportunity or the same potential with EV charging, not yet anyhow. Uh, some of them are starting, like we mentioned Sainsbury several times, and they are putting in a sensible number of chargers. And I was down recently in Bristol uh, at Bradley Stoke, and they've got a massive installation there at one of the retail parks, all Osprey chargers. There's loads going on, but it's very piecemeal. It's postcode lottery. And some of the supermarkets seem to be taking an effort. Others now just ring up, can you install charges? Yeah, come and put a couple in. And that's the attitude they have. If we are going to go EV, which is what's happening at the moment with the law, and by 2030 all cars are going to be EV, then maybe soon the supermarkets will start realising that once you get 30 million EVs on the road, actually that's going to be a big big market for them is keeping them topped up and also once you get 30 million EVs on the road their petrol stations are going to be well redundant uh, who's going to want to sell petrol if everyone's driving around in EVs so there's a potential there for just all these uh, petrol stations at supermarkets to just drag it out as, lo as long as they can and then one day go right whip the whole lot out all the underground tanks everything out uh, bring in some electricity let's put some nice drive-through beds let's charge a sensible price, cut price, uh, maybe 40 or 50 pence, and let's try and attract all of the EV charging from the whole of UK to come to the supermarkets. That's what we're talking about when I keep mentioning a price war. The supermarkets have not yet seen the full potential. They might think there is one there and see a potential on the horizon, but it's not there yet. They're not going to rip out the petrol station today to put in EV chargers. No way, because they make so much money on those. However, as that side starts dwindling, that's when they're going to be looking around. They will not want to lose the revenue from their petrol stations. And if they see that going down, at the same time, EVs are taking off much faster than they have done recently, then there's a good chance that they'll start putting sensible numbers of charges in, and then one day they'll just take out everything on the petrol side, put in EV chargers. Now, in terms of petrol stations, it's gone through a really weird transition. When they first started, there were virtually none. 1919 was the first one, and it grew rapidly. Back in the 60s and 70s, and I do remember driving then, they were everywhere. Little corner shops would have a pump outside, little hardware shops and everything. And it grew up to about 30, 40, 50,000 uh, petrol pumps throughout the UK. And then as the supermarkets take over and the bigger chains, the Shells and the BPs and the SOs, they made bigger and bigger uh, petrol stations, more and more pumps, and eight, 10 pumps is now quite common. Um, the number of locations has, has fallen quite dramatically. And today it's hovering somewhere around the 8,000 mark. 
But we're already seeing, if I say to you what happens when these are no longer petrol stations, first thing that will come to mind is car washers. We see them all over the place, these old ones, and they just use them, they get a gang of whoever it is from whatever country come in and they'll do a fantastic job cleaning your car. But what a waste of an opportunity. EVs haven't taken off as fast as people were hoping they would. A lot of reasons for that, I'm not gonna go into it now, but there will come this point at which these petrol stations start withering away. We've got about 8,000 locations at the moment. That's going to rattle down over the years as more and more EVs come on the road. And at a certain point, these become unviable. And at that point, you've got to think, that's a cracking location for an EV charger. You've got pull-through bays. You can take caravans, lorries, whatever you want through there. You've got all the space and everything. You've got the charging mechanism. All you need to do is just rip out all the old petrol stuff and slap in a load of new EV charging stuff. And with some of the chargers coming on the market now, the headlines recently, the uh, Hyundai Ionic 5, they're now charging at 1,000 kilowatts. This is massive speeds. So you've got an opportunity here when this eventually does stop being viable as a petrol station station to go to one of the ultra, ultra rapid chargers. Tesla coming out with their uh, V4 chargers and cabinets, which are going to be 500 kilowatts. We're in Blackpool recently. They got a couple up there, which is 480 kilowatts. GridServe running 360 kilowatts. Fastnet we went to recently, 400 kilowatts. We can get some really, really rapid charges in here. I did launch a video recently about the silicon carbon batteries and they tested them in a Polestar 5. And these are able to charge a huge amount faster uh, with a smaller space of batteries. It's a double whammy. Um, but they took a Polestar 5, it's, a, it's an experimental car, it's not yet launched, um, and they did a charge on that, fully recorded, but it was 10 minutes to go from 10% to 80%. 10 minutes. That's getting close to the five minutes everyone tells us about and then wandering off and having to pay in the kiosk and pick up your chucky bars along the way, yeah. Uh, okay. So once these cars start coming on the market, uh, and I know for a fact that CATL, and um, several other battery manufacturers are now looking at the silicon carbon batteries, uh, the anodes uh, for the batteries anyhow, and that will take our charging speeds down to around about 8, 10, 12 minutes for a, f uh, well, 10% to 80% charge, which for most of us is a full charge. We don't bother going up to 100% waste of time. Um, and once that starts happening, these suddenly become very viable. You've just got time. Well, in fact, it was Jay, one of our regular commenters. He's one of our Patreon members as well. And he just commented, hang on, these are getting a bit too fast. I want to be able to go in. I need to have a toilet visit. I need to have a coffee, sit down, then walk out to the car. But if they're charging in five minutes, can't do that anymore. So, yeah, OK. Um, same applies to petrol, of course. What we usually do is you go and do everything first and then you pull into the petrol station uh, on the motorway services, for example, then fill up just before you set off. You might end up doing that with an EV. You go there, you can't plug it in, it's too fast. You go and have your coffee, you go and have a meal, you go and have a toilet break. You walk back to your car, you plug it in, you plan your route and within five or six minutes, it's full and you're on your way. Wouldn't that be nice to see? But these have a great use. It'd be a shame to see more car washes because there's only so many cars to wash, aren't there? And they seem to be fairly uh, pretty much everywhere at the moment. So let's see if any of my predictions come true. But if you've got any different uh, opinions, uh, we've got the comments section down below. Leave your comments as to what's going to happen to all these garages. It's about 8,000 of them throughout the country and they are closing down at the moment. I say a figure of 8,000, the light, latest I saw was just over 7,500, but this is changing gradually, so they don't keep an accurate uh, report. But what do we do with them? Are they suitable for EVs? Are they, do you want to see more car watches? Whatever you think, leave, the, uh, leave, your, leave your comments down below. 
So thanks very much for watching. That's it for today. Uh, I'm Dave. If you have enjoyed this, please click the like button. Everyone does help us with the YouTube algorithm. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe, click the notification bell. So every time we launch a video, we can just notify you. And thanks very much to our Patreon members. Uh, they are really supporting the channel, allowing us to get out and do all these videos. So if you'd like to find details of that, uh, there's a link down below. So thanks for now. I'm Dave.